Uh, I'd like to welcome the Minister here to the House to meet with us today. Uh, you're very welcome, Minister Ryan. And I suppose just on the, what we're here to discuss, which is the Elect Electricity Costs Emergency Measures Bill. Minister, you're fully aware we're in the middle of a global energy crisis and the impact of inflation in the Eurozone, never mind the states, you know, nearly 7%. And you've mentioned our short term, medium term and long term. So short term is we need to take action right now, which is the 200 euro that's going to be put into over 2 million household accounts by April. That's immediate action. That's taking action right now for an issue that's facing us right now. Um, you're also mentioning you know, about the fuel allowance, and I would agree about how we do need to review sort of eligibility criteria there, but like, we're looking at that benefiting up to 70,000 households. When it comes to the medium term, Minister, the investment in the retrofitting scheme, because yes, it is important, we've seen that rolled out this week or last week as well, 100% funding for those that are most vulnerable, 80% from wall and attic insulation, and up to 25k for a full energy home upgrade. Uh, but Minister, I suppose the challenges there, and I know from Minister Harris as well about the uh, retrofit scheme, the centres of excellence that have been rolled out, that we've four across the country now, about upskilling people, getting people up to speed on the trades so that they're able to roll this scheme out. But Minister, I don't know if you can speak a little bit about the plans you have in place to maybe manage the waiting times around that as well. Um, Minister, we also saw 430 million yesterday announced into the third level sector. Half of that funding, Minister, is going to technological universities. So, you know, half of that, there'll be four funding streams, one of which will be around the apprenticeship uh, section. So, in other words, that the technological universities will have the capacity to develop more and more students coming through doing apprenticeships linked with employers. Um, I think that's really, really crucial. Uh, Minister, you also spoke about the long term, and I suppose that comes back to our renewable energy uh, measures, and particularly, I suppose, offshore wind farms. I, have, I would be curious just about the microelectricity scheme, how that has been going since the announcement in December. Um, how has that been progressing? Have you any update on that? That would be very interesting. I suppose I would see that this has huge potential in terms of our farms, our schools, been able to, um, been able to have solar panels where they're able to generate their own electricity and also pay back into the grid under the export uh, certificate scheme. On transport, well, I, you know exactly where I'm from, Minister in Van Slow, and I know you'd know Ahaskara as well, pretty well. Uh, in East Galway and Roscommon, uh, I suppose quite a regional area, um, very aware of the transport challenges we've had there as well. But Minister, I was involved in uh, the Connecting Ireland scheme when that was doing the public campaign. I did two campaigns, one in Roscommon, one in East Galway, about promoting the types of uh, transport and what we want to see coming into, you know, Connecting particularly our universities, our hospitals like Thusen, Athlone, GMIT in Galway, uh, also with the uh, with um, Port Yonkla Hospital and Roscommon University Hospital, how there's no real connectivity there for an awful lot of these uh, key institutions and amenities and, and, and hospitals in our area. But Minister, what is the outcome from the Connecting Ireland Rural Mobility Plan? Do we have a timeline for when there's going to be an outcome on that? Uh, there were a number of different routes that were being suggested, but like in the past week with the announcement of the 20% off public transport, and very welcome of course the school cap, you know, 500 euro for a family with secondary school children, you know, that that's the cap for school transport. But an awful lot of people in the area I'm from getting really annoyed going, that has no benefit to us, you know, brilliant if you're living in the city centre, the town centre, Brilliant, of course, because we have the 19 to 23 scheme that was brought in in the budget for the students, which will be half price travel. And, you know, that that should be implemented as soon as possible, along with the working family payment. But, Minister, what about the Connecting Ireland uh, scheme? When is the feedback going to come out from that? When are we going to see more transport between our smaller villages and our towns connecting with our towns? And also, when are we going to see just basic bus stops with a cover on them. <laughs> I mean, it sounds like we're asking for the sun, moon and stars, but like when I was a councillor, I invested in one, and only because we could do it on one side of the footpath, because the footpath was wide enough, to actually have a cover in Banaslow town, second largest town in Banaslow. There's no cover for people waiting at the bus. Um, the bus stops at the hospital, yes, they're covered, some of those. But for people, you're asking older people, you're asking people with a disability, maybe you're asking uh, young families, kids and prams to wait on the side of a road. It, it is so crucial that we have to have a quality of life because people now demand more. They demand more than 20 or 30 years ago. And there are people that are taking taxis right now. And, and how does this fund of 20% of public transport benefit them? And that's really what I want to ask, Minister. I know it's hard to have answers straight away. I very much appreciate the short-term, immediate measures that the government have taken and done straight away, right now, to roll it out. But just on the medium term and the long term, how are we going to, to get the inputs back from the measures that you're putting in place over the last few months? Gurmila Magas, Minister, and thank you, Chair.